From sunny southwest Florida, put on your mittens because this one's gonna be hot. We got Brendan, Kevin, James, and <laughs> Al. All right, Ni hao. That is the pass of the off the mic. That's hello in Chinese. Is it very nice? Oh, that, can I, Konnichiwa. That's Japanese. Japanese. Ah, that's yeah. much no more. Much no more. Hi, everybody. How? How's it been, everyone? It's been a long time since we've done one of these. I don't even remember the last time. It feels so long ago. Like March 6th. Oh, my goodness. So long. <laughs> we've uh, been through it's been a, a month. month. Yeah, it's been a whole month. But uh, we've been through a lot. We uh, went on an amazing road trip to Tennessee where we visited the great city of Nashville. And we also went to Gatlinburg. and Another great city. Another great city, yes. That was a mm-hmm. nice surprise. The music scene there was amazing. Ga- oh, yeah. Gatlinburg. Gatlinburg. Not, not the music scene in Gatlinburg wasn't amazing. It was, it was I, thought it was, I thought it was Where was the music we didn't in need, We didn't even see any music. Yeah, I saw somebody playing a banjo. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, so you like the old time. But it was not cool. while we were in the woods. No. We got to see our very own James go down with a drum, drum challenge here. Right yeah. there in the middle of the One streets. of the bars, uh, um, a man was playing on a bucket in the street, and mm-hmm. I felt like there was some drum line cadence thing going on, so I went down there, and I was like, hey, can I play on your bucket for a while? He's like, yeah, man, I need a break. <laughs> just, just keep playing. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. Time, yeah, I was surprised. For those of you that don't know, James is white, <laughs> and the guy that was originally playing the drums was black. Was, but um, and but the, every there was no racial tension. No, at all. no, we, we there's uh, we call ourselves Drum Brothers, right, Kev? Yep. You were down there, we were talking, and we connected in a way. I kind of wish I brought my own bucket so I could join up with them. There's a lot of people always, concerned. That's always an alternate the, career. The Bucket Brothers. Bucket that's Brothers. Right. That's what it was. The bucket bucket brothers. brothers. Yes. Uh, one day, Bucket Brothers will re- reunite, mm-hmm. and maybe we'll spread the... You guys can start a band. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean... You can't have two drummers just in a band. It doesn't make well, any sense. Yeah, one will be on drums, Boss the other will be on buckets. Oh my gosh, Ooh. you know what you can do? It could be like a blue man group, but you could be like a different color. <sighs> but you already are... Uh, <laughs> Black and white. Black and white. <laughs> Ebony and Ivory! Oh, the there you go. go. <laughs> this is it. That's it. This is great. The second this coming. Is this is what happens wow. when... You break down the racial barriers in this country. But no, James, I, James I'm all about that. You're not ebony or ivory. What are you talking about? He's ivory. He's yeah. ebony. Ebony and ivory. Black and white. Kevin ivory is white, Let's Kevin. That's moving on. We <laughs> lost the... We yes. lost Kevin. <laughs> um, ebony is the black one. Ivory is the white one. <laughs> Kevin doesn't see any colors. He he's, 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 a ve- he's a very tolerant man. Yes, he is. Except but, um, when it comes to Al Sharpton. He hates Al Sharpton. Bright. So the main reason for this... Uh, really hates Al Sharpton. <laughs> <laughs> more than me. That, and more than me. <laughs> we wanted to uh, explore the mountains. We uh, were hiking through the Appalachian Trail in the Smoky Mountain area. Um, They're there. The yeah. mountains are there to explore. We uh, did a four-day, four-night hike. Something like that. Some of us did. Some of us did. Um, on the last day, it snowed on us, and uh, Kevin and I are... Oh, y'all got snowed yeah. on. <laughs> uh, we you decided to end it a little early, but our friends, uh, Brian and Alex, uh, decided to climb that mountain. Sure one, did. Sure the phone did. Mm-hmm. They froze our asses off, but... Yes, we did. I jogged down one mountain, only to <laughs> hike back up another. That's right. Really fast. I actually jogged, like... Four or five miles an hour down. So, do you guys want to ex- uh, explain what we did, like for the hiking experience, like what <clears throat> mountains we did, what we went up mountains, we went down mountains. 
We were on Ridgeline. Did you enjoy the experience? Uh, as, <laughs> as our probably the most experienced person uh, hiking, uh, Brendan, do you want to explain? I really did enjoy it. The last time I went hiking in the Appalachian Mountains, I was in a hurry. And this time around, I really took time to enjoy my surrounding and sort of move at a very comfortable pace. And I had a really good time with it, you know? Just awesome. one step at a time. It was very meditative, very, very zen. There's a lot of clarity going on. Are we talking about the Rockies? No, we're talking. This is Appalachian, guys. (laughs) The Smokies? No, I'm talking about. We're already talking about the Rockies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we uh, we want to continue doing this uh, these trips together. Uh, We work pretty well as a team. Yeah, we discovered so. We didn't even like. We didn't even flick one another. That's how peaceful it was. St. Louis is. Traditionally, the gateway to the west, but I think I think Denver now. Denver more so because you have the Rocky Mountains. You fly into Denver, and it's just it's almost like a prairie. It maybe is a prairie, mm. and then you have these huge mountains, and at the base of the mountains you have the city. That's where like, the continental divide is, guys. It is, it's like the settlers saw the mountains and they said, "Fuck it, we're stopping here." They didn't want to go over the mountains. And they yeah, the city. hey, I mean, we, that, fair it's, enough. It's Denver. I mean, you either. And that's why it's called go. Denver. It's Native what? American for fuck it, we're stuck. <laughs> it's enough. Apache. It's Apache. Ah, yes. And then the Apache helicopter is like, we finally built something that goes over these mountains. Finally. And have you seen the Comanche helicopter? Mm-hmm. Kind of. It's a stealth version of the Apache. Crazy. Oh, the Comanche too. Comanche's badass. Yeah. You don't want to run into the Comanche though when no. you're stealing cattle from Mexico. Like they did on Lonesome Dove. Yeah, um, I really enjoyed the experience of being out there in the woods and just kind of being on your own and not having to worry about Facebook and social media and having to talk to... Speak for yourself. You missed it? You missed being connected? No. I like being off the grid. Oh yeah, being off the grid is nice. Yeah, it's a good refresh. Beautiful thing. I feel um, ever since then like at peace. I feel very zen. Um, and I, I know, I got back to this crap hole they call the real world, and I was like, why? It doesn't bother me. Like, I feel, I, I, it was nice to get away, and it feels nice to be back. I, I don't mind. That's my grind, this crap hole they call the real world, <laughs> when it's really just a fake the Matrix collection of materialism. <laughs> Ew. Oh. Nasty whores. Yeah, I agree. What did you uh, get from it, Kevin? Did you enjoy the experience being out there? I did. Uh, I loved everything about it. About as far as the uh, the views and everything, um, it was very beautiful out there. Um, I was very I was able to enjoy it. The first day kicked my ass. It was a ten point three mile hike. Um, yeah, that was a rough day. And yep, and uh, you gave me a blister, man. Brandon, oh, my I still have my Kevin. giant blister on the oh, under side of my heel. Really? Yeah, I have it's, mine. It's healed almost all the way. No, mine's a callus there. now. I just felt it. For those of you that can't see, <laughs> we're not um, a video podcast yet, but we're working on that. Yep. Stay tuned for that. Twerking um, and working. We have a really cool setup for the video, of Alex. Ow, oh, sorry. Hey, I don't want actually the GoPro identity there. being <laughs> out there, man. I'm sorry, Alex. Oh, <laughs> speaking of Alex, hey. One thing oh. I kept mentioning during the trip oh, was this oh, Jesus. dime piece chick That's named right. nothing other than Al, but <laughs> her name was actually Alex. So, oh my god, you felt a strong connection to her. Oh, I didn't say nothing quote, to quote, her. Uh, I just, I didn't want to interrupt her while she was bent over in front of me. Yes, I. And I, good I, thing she didn't have a smelly finuter because I swear it was right there in my face. I, I don't think you mentioned where we were at. We were at Coyote Ugly. <laughs> yeah, we were susceptible yeah. to uh, stick your vagina in front of guys' faces. Yeah, it wasn't in a skirt or nothing. It was in tight leather pants. So you know. It was pretty nice. And I had a uh, nice little lady in front of me, too. Uh, wasn't as... Uh, um, didn't stay with me as long as uh, Al's. Oh, she was... <laughs> yeah, uh, I liked mine a lot, but not... Mine blown. <laughs> Everything you'd want in a skinny girl. I, he mentioned this at least, what... Eight times. <laughs> every, <laughs> hey guys, every you exit. Remember Alex? That's all we heard. Hey guys, remember Alex? It's like I, I wasn't even thinking about that. It's like I was worried about where I was going. I was absorbing the information around me, the nature and bears, bears, trying to avoid squirrels. 
Yeah. Did we not mention our names, by the way? Oh, we had some awesome names. Yeah, we, um, we did. Apparently, one of the things that these uh, uh, the hikers... Uh, what's the appropriate name for... Through um, hikers. Through hikers, hikers. Well, that are through hiking hikers, through the whole like, trail. And then there's section hikers. Yeah. And then there's just the little... The day peons day. that are just day hikers <laughs> day. going well, to Charlie's Bunyan. A very common thing to do is to establish a, uh, a trail name. A, a, yeah, a trail name. And uh, we didn't even realize this when we started our adventure, but uh, one of the first things we did was set up names. And we had uh, Brendan with Coach, the coach. Mm -hmm. We have Kevin with the director. Yep. Alex with the dude. And that's right. B that's Lebowski <laughs> reference for those that you don't. That don't know that the dude is a Lebowski reference. And it's so fitting for Al. We just had to give it to him. Even yeah. more fitting. Um, was your name James? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Us three agree that it was because you just dart off everywhere. <laughs> One time. Every time. <laughs> One time nuts. every time. I and it was for roasted nuts. It, ha it yeah. happened, at, it happened at Bass Pro and it happened at on the trail when the infamous... <laughs> Bless you, sweet child. The infamous <laughs> shortcut. Bless you, sweet child. We all went the shortcut, and there was one who decided to go up on top of a rock. Well, uh, that was, I made this, the right decision. <laughs> I had a great view, and I got a great shot with a group of girls. I made the right decision to leave and go do my own thing at that time, oh. because I was nowhere near that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey. 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 What well, to you? I I will attest to that, Brendan. Yeah. Uh, Brendan was nowhere near around the girls. <laughs> I did my he own said, thing. "You guys stay away from those she devils <laughs> for for anything that could be sirens." I decided, <laughs> I decided not to go the dangerous shortcut and just trail that rock and get a great view. Yeah, they were they were some hot young Indiana not girls. Not about the girls. <laughs> I'm talking oh, about the nuns. The nuns. <laughs> The mountains. Oh, the mountains got you, yeah. <laughs> the nuns were after. That was the after party. At the oh, party. boy, those nuns were dirty. They were. <laughs> you would never expect it. <laughs> then when those robes come off, Ooh. oh. I was not expected that. What they're wearing underneath is just That's every grown man's dream. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So, yeah, um, amazing hiking trip. We wanted yeah, I was going to bring up something. Yeah. You guys keep talking while I think about okay, it. Okay, that was great. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, we are, we're planning on going to the Rocky Mountains uh, probably next year. We mm -hmm. got all this gear. We might as well uh, explore some more and get some new scenery. Oh, yeah. We got connections over there, so. Some of us do. Yep, some of us do. I kind of do. I don't know. Maybe. Don't know. Maybe. No Russians over there uh, that you know of? Who knows? No, but what I was going to say is, is uh, what we were talking about... Um, the trail and trail names, you know, eventually when your squad has their goals set on trail names, then your squad can have these other squad goals set about having a trail mix, all right? And this trail mix that your squad conjures up can be sampled to the thru-hikers, and the thru-hikers actually share this trail mix from your squad because these through hikers are very like uh, c a connected group of people they they have like a very crazy yeah. buddy system yeah it's really nifty most people don't know that these people have like legends that go on throughout this trail like one of the guys we've seen all right his name was uh lower yeah how about that you yeah. guys knew exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah he He's looked like this old mountain prospector dude no, he already did the trail twice. The entire trail twice. The He's doing it again. Georgia to Maine. Yeah. 2,000 miles, man. We, we saw him. He was uh, approaching us on our second day of the hike. And we see this figure, and he looks like a, a mountain goat. And for those of you that heard, might have not heard that correctly, he said figure. And if you're interested in seeing old loner boner, go to SWFL Brendan. <laughs> you dirty whore! You and you can see a picture of old loader boner. Oh, I, you, something that we didn't know. S W F L B R E N D O N. This For, is feel free to follow this guy right over here. He is the a shameless plug. He, <laughs> during the whole time, you wouldn't expect this from a man who 
isn't really up to know on the social media stuff, and all of a sudden he turns into the little he geeked out <laughs> over Instagram so <laughs> like hard no you would never expect it. He had one day he, this guy's gonna go bald, but you'll never notice <laughs> because he has so many shameless plugs on his head. <laughs> <laughs> all the plugs. But right. Bravo. Um, I am feel free to share at the end of the podcast more of your uh, social media sites that you guys want to share. Um, you always stay connected to us on Twitter. I know we post that on our YouTube videos. And uh, make sure you guys uh, go on our Facebook page, Fractal Minds Entertainment. Yep. That's where you can always uh, watch our YouTube videos and stay up to date on Fractal Minds news. Should we plug all of our social media stuff right now? Yeah. Yeah, sure, why not? Um, I'm Drum and J108 on everything, so <laughs> you go and search on that Twitter, Instagram. I like to, uh, I, I'm like an Instagram. It's nice. Uh, I like just sharing a photo. Um, I like finding cool photos and sharing them. So I've been liking Instagram. Uh, Al, do you want to share yours? Yeah, just what you can do is if you follow Drum and J, whatever, whatever, 108, 108, what he said. You can look for me. I'm probably the guy that you would assume is me that is tagged in some of his pictures. I don't want to give out my full name because that's kind of my name <laughs> on Instagram and everything else. So In, in real life as well. Yeah, and, and in real life as well. That's so. great. Uh, Kev, your turn? Uh, I'm usually on Twitter, at Kevin Ballantyne. That's K-E-V-I-N. B as in boy, A L L A N T I N E. Um, more on the, I don't have an Instagram. I have a Facebook account. I don't really use it too much. Um, I mainly use the, my Twitter uh, account. That's and fun. Brendan, you already had your shameless plug, so we're not yeah. Let's just repeat it one more time. <laughs> it's S W F L D R E N D O N. <laughs> Southwest Florida, Brendan. Feel free to follow. <laughs> that's great. I do. Yeah. You need to post some more, man. You gotta post more from the trip. I was expecting more photos from you. Well, I mean, it has to sort of be in an appropriate time frame, I feel like. If you post too much after the fact. Yeah? You know, I feel... I want to be... That's why they do... Th up to date. Okay, up to date, but then they also have uh, Thursdays, Throwback Thursdays. Can Throwback Thursdays be like two weeks ago? Yeah, man. There's no limit. It's just a throwback. It could be a, of an hour ago. <laughs> Alright gentlemen, well um, I guess we'll move on from the hike and uh, we'll talk about another first for uh, Kevin and I. Uh, we completed our first 5k. Woo! Uh, we did that this past Saturday. On, I've uh, never April. even done a 5k. You as the... Um, you do a 5k every day. Yeah, <laughs> the crazy Stairmaster Al over there, you should have done a 5k years ago. This dude, not to go back onto the trail trip, but this dude... As much time as he does the Stairmaster, he had the heaviest pack of us all and was arguably the fastest person in the trail, leaving us all behind in the snow on the last day. So yeah. you guys just wanted to play in the snow, so <laughs> yeah. we were playing the snow a lot. Not gonna lie. I was just cold and I needed to keep a move on. I built uh, Brendan the snowman for him to find. Yeah. It's like I would have walked back to Florida if I had to. <laughs> it was freezing. It was 10 degrees. <laughs> and in the last place we stayed at, we couldn't have a fire. Mm. No, nope. because it was right next to a lodge, and they didn't want to attract bears, so they'd rather you freeze to death, yeah. which I almost did. Oh, wow. I came really close, but you know it's it's hard for me. I'm like Boris the Blade around here. It's hard for me to die. That's a good plug. <laughs> Brent, what are you doing over there? I'm posting loader boner. What? I'm posting loader boner to my Instagram, like I promised our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that right now. We're recording. All right, guys, so you ran in the color run. You had a good time. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like this is something you're going to keep up? You just went on a four- or five-day hike. You come back. You run a 5K. Like, I feel like you guys should be doing something new every week because you guys are on a run right now. You guys are really – you're on a roll. Yeah, a lot of these experiences, I want to jump on it and not necessarily do like every week, but – this this last week was very eventful. Like, everything lined up together. Did, did you ever think like if you didn't have a job, you were enjoying the sort of, world a lot more? Well, even if you had no money, no job, no strings, no attachments anywhere. 
like the what would it be like just to hitchhike, track. jump on the train, make your way in any way you can just in any going. part of like the world? Like Tom Sawyer. One of my good friends actually did that. He uh, went to Phoenix, Arizona, and just kind of went there and was not necessarily homeless, but just without was a home. Yeah, yeah, he was without a home and. I respect that. Yeah, just kind of. A, a, I don't know if I of, could ever do it. Yeah, that's and tough. maybe kind of romanticize, you know, that life on the road. I think it'd be a lot Not harder than going expect. next. To, I think it would be a lot harder too. I mean, shelter is something. The Eagles that made a lot of songs about that. The Eagles were a great band. I love the Eagles. I hate the Eagles, man. They have a couple of good songs. Hotel California. Uh, I don't like that. Eric song. Clapton mm-hmm. version. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. like Hotel California. The the one band that's Mexican that. Plays it on the Big Lebowski. Oh, yeah. That's a good yeah. version. That's a yeah. good cover. It's like Hilarious. the Clapton version of Hotel California. I don't think I've heard that. Yeah, it's just him playing guitar in the cool. background. So no. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, did a great solo for uh, While My Guitar Gently Weeps by the Beatles. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Man, I Excellent had a rough guitar. day, guys. guys I don't want to listen to the Eagles. One of the greatest guitars of all time. Greatest. I think one of the greatest. Well, I think, yeah, one of the greatest. Yeah. Is he better than Kirk Hammett from Metallica? In his own way, yeah. In his own way. I mean, if you dig that kind of metal, metal. I mean, but if you dig something a little more bluesy, it blows them out of the water. There's, yeah. I mean, I don't like the blues; it depresses me. uh, Yeah, we've heard all that about that. Every time he mentioned the blues, (laughs) (laughs) or the eagle. Well, he started with the Yardbirds. Yeah, yeah. That's old school. That's old, old, old very old. Isn't that a game that you play with big darts in your lawn, or is that just called lawn darts? I thought a yard bird was a chicken. Yeah, that's that's one of those slang terms for a chicken. If you're from the south, like you guys are, you bunch of crackers. Alex makes cracker job. <laughs> no. No. Oh. Well, anyway, the theme of today's show. Anyway, I was going to get to a point about something before I was interrupted about pointless. Uh, banter about who the greatest guitarist of all time is, which is an Eric Clapton, by the way. Uh, I really don't have an opinion because there's so many great people that it's play very the guitar. Subjective. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. an endless debate. There's... I mean, you could say, well, Jimi Hendrix was a great yeah, guitar player. Yeah, of course he was, but the greatest. I don't even want to debate it, guys. Well, it's not. Then. Don't yeah, even make it. Move move on. On. Exactly. But I had something on my mind. Move on. You can take I had on. something on my mind. All right, and I just can't think of it right now. Oh my <laughs> goodness! You are the worst. <laughs> God, and it tied into the last story so well. Alex, you might be voted off the island. <laughs> Why? I'm, awesome. I'm too awesome for this island. You might be. Too I'm an much. island unto myself. So I've been told many times. Anyway, you guys keep carrying on this conversation <laughs> while I try to remember what else. Yeah, guys, we'll move on to the next topic. Yeah. Let's move on. Um, until Alex gets it together and figures out what it is he wants Until I get my bearings straight. We, we, he until I get we'll my bearings straight. When, when Alex gets his, gets his bearings straight. Thank you, Brendan. We will all know, and we'll cut what we're doing, and we'll discuss it. I'll that's quote Brendan on getting my bearings straight, because that's, that's what he kept saying during the hike. You guys don't remember that? I remember that like it was yesterday. I remember you being very on point. Okay, well, I kept saying on point. That's just one of the things I say. Kevin, why are you looking at me like that? I'm just, I'm waiting for something to leave your mouth that I have to edit. (laughs) Oh, come on. Just because I said that one joke that you already edited out in this podcast that I thought off the top of my head, and it was funny, but because it's controversial, it was edited out, whatevs. But I'm not going to do it again. I know how annoying it is to edit these things. I sat with you guys listening to it. <laughs> Thank you for your consideration. You're welcome, man. <laughs> That's why I told you the timestamp on where that edit should be. It's okay. 1953. Right, so, on to our next segment. Um, Brendan, what have you been up to? What have you been watching? Um, been I've been watching The Jinx on HBO. Which is a true crime, I'd say a five or six part documentary on Robert Durst. He's the heir to the Durst real estate fortune. Uh, they own a bunch of real estate, and his family does in New York City. In fact, I think they own the new trade center, World Trade Center. Really? Yeah, they say manage it. Huh. Family's worth billions of dollars. I guess so. Uh, 
30 some odd years ago, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, he was suspected of killing his wife, and he got off. Oh! And then he was suspected of killing a friend. Is this the guy who admitted it in the documentary? Yeah, like, exactly. What? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it was pretty amazing. I saw this. Sorry. It's, it, it's pretty amazing. Um, recently, he made the news. Not recently, but in the past, I think, 10, 15 years. Uh, he was hiding out in Texas, uh, disguised as a woman. Staying in some sort of apartment where the rent was two hundred and fifty a month. This guy's worth tens, hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. individually, and uh, he's hanging out in Texas in this pretty, you know, low—I don't say low class, but working class place. Not a very nice place, mm -hmm. and uh, he—he uh, was—he uh, was caught chopping up his neighbor. And then dumping the body in the ocean, in small plastic bags. Wow! And he hired yeah, some of the best like, lawyers money could buy, and he got off. Somehow <laughs> of they convinced the court that it was self-defense, uh. and uh, he's been accused of like three, four, five murders. Sometimes yeah. you just gotta get out of your comfort zone. Sometimes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at the the thing that James was talking about at the end of the documentary, he goes to the bathroom, he sells the camera. Or not the camera, but the microphone attached to him, and you can hear him whisper to himself, "Did I murder these people? Of course I did. I murdered them all, or something along those lines." I have heard about this. Yeah, and, he made uh, the news recently. Yeah, and he, and he was arrested the day the season finale <laughs> the series came out. Um, it was it's a it's a really good show. That's insane. Uh, so it's that's different cool. than a Kardashian. Exactly. Who knows what kind of trouble? Yeah. Oh, wow. Maybe well, Lots of murders. I've heard Definitely. I've heard rumors. There's a lot of rumors about Kardashians killing people. <laughs> Surprised that they didn't kill Paris Hilton. Yeah. Kevin. Alex. <laughs> what have you been watching? Uh, I've been watching a new show. This has to do with something later. I'll, I'll bring it up later. Um, the uh, I've been watching a TV show um, on the... I keep getting it wrong. I always get the History Channel, the Discovery Channel confused, but it's on uh, <clears throat> Discovery Channel, right? Uh, history. <laughs> history. Goddamn. I always get confused. Uh, it's a new show called The Vikings, which I'm already up. I started it, like, I don't know, four days ago, <laughs> and I'm up to season two, episode four, or something like that. You're pro watching. Yeah. Like, instead of playing video games, which <laughs> I would, I mean, not to bring up too much, but The Achievement Wars, it's because I've been sucking into TV shows. That's my, that's my handicap right now. That's um, what he says. Yeah. Um, but... The show follows a Viking called Ragnarok. Ragnarok the Viking. Uh, he's, I mean, it's so far really cool. The Vikings, they don't play the Vikings up as these really good people. They have them true to what all of the, the history books say. Um, they're rapists. They, they're savage. I mean, they, looking outward from, from an outward perspective, you'd think they're savages. Coming from them, that's just how they, that's just how they are. That's just they go... They pillage, they go for gold, they see women, they either sell them as slaves or whatever. It's, it's an interesting uh, concept, but it's not on the Game of Thrones levels of nudity and gore, because obviously it is a History Channel movie. So it's, there are times where I feel like I am watching a, uh, like, you'll, you'll see a waterfall. I almost feel like I'm watching something from a documentary or something. Like, it doesn't look like it's part of the movie, and then... I don't know. It is, sometimes it's, it's kind of weird. So production values are not as high? Yeah. Like maybe because, you know, it was, you know, their first run at it. They didn't know how well it would do. And I hope by I get by the time I get to season four, it looks like Game of Thrones. Not to say that the, the, the graphics are too bad. It's you want dragons? I don't need dragons. <laughs> but I need the boats when they're going across the sea to not look so CG. I think that's unfortunately <laughs> just the, the network. Like yeah, the History HBO. Channel does have a huge budget. Yeah, right? yeah. HBO is not exactly. to where HBO has. But yeah, yeah, it's good to hear that the show is uh, living up to good expectations. It's excellent. The plot is it's excellent. Awesome. Mm -hmm. My uh, my father recommended that show to me, and he also mm -hmm. recommended uh, some other one watching uh, Peaky Blinders. Mm -hmm. uh, set in 1919, uh, England, <laughs> and it follows this gangster family that. Uh, it's kind of taken over this town. Um, they're named the Peaky Blinders, and they're very thuggish. Um, they they're kind of the the sheriffs of town, but they also play dirty, and um, they have razor blades sewn into their hats, and that's kind of their main weapon. They'll they slash their 
uh, opponents hmm. with his hidden razor blades. But uh, great acting. Um, it's on Netflix, so anyone with Netflix account can watch it. It's up to two seasons right now, and they confirmed for a third season, of course. And uh, the main character is, uh, or the main actor is Cillian Murphy, who we know from uh, Sunshine and Batman Begins, um, and also uh, 28 Days Later is the main character from that. Mm-hmm. Well, but uh, yeah, it's a really good show. Uh, great acting. Um, it has that. British accent in there with all the characters, so that's always kind of fun to enjoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> kind of hard to understand at some points, but very entertaining to watch. Because I'll never get the title right, what's that movie we just watched? Snatch. Snatch. Yep. yep. My yeah. first time watching that, too, so that was pretty that's good. That's Guy Ritchie, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I can never understand what those people are saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I... And you're from England. Yeah. <laughs> yeah from England. I have no clue what they're saying. They speak too fast. The words I, they use don't make sense. Speak English. <laughs> one of my favorite characters. Speak English, Englishman. One of my favorite characters is uh, Brad's, Brad Pitt's character, and the Pikey. he's Pikey that it talks so fast. And normally I can never understand him, but this time watching it, I really wanted to listen in, and I could hear him pretty clear actually, and I could hear what kind of accent he was going for. It was pretty cool. I it's like, like a gypsy. Yes. Pikey's like a gypsy. I'm just going to watch those movies with headphones because ah. the audio quality with your TV is never nearly as good as when you have it, you know, directly so being injected into your head. Um, I, I think it would be easier to understand. You hear different um, effects, um, you know, like listening to music, oh, um, yeah. especially during a hiking trip when um, we were hiking along the, the trails. I put my music on the headphones and I haven't done that in a while yeah. and I was hearing all these songs in a different way. In a different way. It's, 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 it's a better quality, I yeah. think. Yeah. It's, you know, Beats Audio has something going there. <laughs> but, uh, so Al, what have you been watching? I watched Lucy, finally. Uh, I've been, nice. I seen the preview, and I'm like, oh man, I want to see this movie so bad. And then I seen this preview while I was married, and then my ex-wife <laughs> was like, oh, you just want to see it because Scott Johansson's in it, don't you? Oh, don't you? And I'm not the one that cheated. Anyway. Oh, 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 oh real talk. <laughs> anyway. Hashtag real talk. Yeah, I, I, I didn't get a chance to cheat with Charles Johan- the Scarlett Johansson. Shame on me. Should have. Anyway, if I could have. <laughs> anyway, the reason I want to see this movie, not because of Scarlett Johansson, whoopity do, you know, yeah, but you because. What do you do with Black Widow? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Those leather pants. Uh huh. Remind me a lot of Alex. Remind me a lot of Alex. Oh, That's right. <laughs> anyway. All right, so when I seen this preview, I'm like, oh, this is such a 46 and 2 movie. And for any of you that don't know what the 46 and 2 concept is, there is YouTube videos uh, part of, uh, parted with the Tool song titled 46 and 2 that you can view and get an easy grasp of in just like six minutes. Anyway... <laughs> This movie, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. This has got to be part of the whole 46 and 2 concept. But I never got a chance to watch it until recently. And I watched it, I'm like, oh, this is... Oh, I was so happy seeing it, because it didn't let me down whatsoever. It was great. But it mostly talked about, uh, instead of chromosomes, the brain and the uh, capacity for what all it can do when it's at full capacity. Brendan. Which I've actually heard is a myth. Yeah, it could be. It ah. is the ten percent. The ten percent yeah, is that we use all of our brain, but just yeah. like on a bicycle, when you're riding a bicycle, you know, only certain parts are moving. The frame isn't doing anything while your tires are moving, but they work together in a way that's working at a hundred percent. But maybe only ten percent of the bike's moving. Yeah, well, it's it's a cool concept, but yeah, it's always idea. it's always in theory. I like a lot of science. A lot of science that you still hear now is in theory. Sure. A lot of yeah, quantum physics. Is that's the beautiful thing about theory. theory. That's it's always the, the whole point of science is to be a scientific fact. And you only get that way by theories. No, that's true. You get that. That's we, the truest thing. You, you ever. get that. You get the scientific pat, uh, fact by understanding properties and their values. And you get that way by theories. You have to by have theory e- right? experimentation. He's an alchemist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has all the answers already. There. There's. Let's start with James on this one. Science, <laughs> of course, starts with theory until it's proven to be fact. Yep. But everything is theory first. Well, it's trial and error. But it's still considered science. That, that's trial exact, and error. And that's a part of theory. Science, that's science is the act of 
making theory fact by testing out different hypotheses. Theory is thinking. Trial and error is doing. Do you not? Yeah, but you do it based on the framework of theory. No, you do. You like Isaac Newton, for example. Yeah, you know, I don't know if he was considered a scientist. He was considered a physicist after the fact, right? Yeah. You know, after the fact, he discovered gravity. Now, how did he discover gravity? Did like an apple just, just fall on the, his head, and he's like, "Ouch!" But I'm was, thinking that apple fell on my head but because of gravity. But even when the apple fell on his head, it was still the theory of gravity. It wasn't the fact of it. It was still the theory of gravity explaining a factual. The effect. physics of it were fact. Yeah, the but, apple did but, fall but, on but, his head. But the only way it becomes fact is you have an idea first, and that's commonly known as a theory. You have a theory, and then you prove it, then it's fact. What's that science? What's that science test we do in high school where you gotta have a little backdrop? It's the something theorem. You gotta you gotta come up with a hypothesis. You gotta have a control about, group. Kevin. You gotta have yeah. a test group. That whole thing is called something theorem. Maybe, I don't know if it's a scientific theorem. I'm trying to look it up. But I, I think it is called the scientific theorem. It is a scientific you, theorem. Okay. But the crazy thing about the scientific theorem is <laughs> it's a theorem. Anyway, <laughs> getting back on Lucy. Getting back on Lucy. Anyway, the reason why I found it exciting is because it, I always find this whole theory. Oh, things are getting real now. This whole theory about human beings and all, moving above new barriers through new barriers, exciting to me. Yeah. It's like, say, boom, all of a sudden a hu human being can go Super Saiyan or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. And just, because, just because they're in better synth synthesis mm. with not only themselves, but their surroundings, all right? That's what I really mm. appreciate about the movie Lucy. Mm. It's like, ultimately, you do evolve by becoming a better synthesis with your surroundings and yourself. Mm -hmm. Whether it's chromosomes, mental capacity, experience, or even theory. <laughs> Suck it, science. <laughs> this should now, be called Alex. My only question, because my, my fear of seeing Lucy uh, was because I saw the movie Limitless. I don't know mm -hmm. if you saw that. Which I was the guy so. took the guy took a pill. It was Matthew McConaughey took a pill. No, it was Bradley uh, Cooper. Bradley Cooper. Oh my bad. And um, it just opened up his mind. He used 100 percent capacity of his mind, mm -hmm. and he was able not to bend physics like Lucy yeah. was, but he. Because I thought there was something. I thought I saw something in the preview of like it's, shit it, happening. She, she had like powers in the trailer. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. and, and yeah. then their theories they. Talk about well, you can control other people, and then you can control okay. matter. Oh, okay, so that is a yeah. different. Okay, this different movie goes a little bit further into yeah, the science fiction. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Limitless. He just he becomes rich because he can. He knows how to. <laughs> but this little, that, was yeah. my problem. <laughs> that was my problem with it too, because it, it focused more on the whole mental capacity. In mm. my mm. understanding of the whole forty-six and two idea, mm. it's not just mental capacity mm. or just physical capacity. It's Primarily, in order to push yourself further than what, where you already are, it's spiritual capacity. Mm -hmm. So, you basically have to not only believe and feel into something, but actually transition into the physical realm of spirituality somehow. Mm -hmm. Like with your own spirituality. Gotcha. So, I mean, it, that's, that's what I say. It was like a cool, like, 46 and 2 movie. It was mostly about mental capacity, but yeah. it had other variables in it that made it 46 and 2. Very cool. cool. Yeah, I've been wanting to check that out. And I'll it's a good movie. It it's yeah. a good movie. Good to hear. Well, um, something I discovered uh, recently that I told Kevin that I was very excited about or is the, um, is the upcoming video game releases that are <laughs> going to be upon us very soon. Um, three yes. great games. Uh, three looks like upcoming blockbusters. Get over here! Months. Yes, uh, to start it off, uh, next week is going to be Mortal Kombat X. Two. The next installment to the long, long franchise. And is I that Mortal Kombat 10? Yes. Kombat yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, they they want to be a little flashy, so just yeah. saying 10, they want to go. Yeah. So this isn't, this isn't Mortal Kombat X rated. This no. is Mortal Kombat 10. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, from what I I've heard about the fatalities, it could be X-rated. Oh. It's very gory. Yes, they're going even more extreme than we got some BDSM fatalities here. <laughs> Wasn't there titties in the first in one of the first ones? 
I was Can't you put a code in and some of the women had no top on? I don't remember that. I what never played in? that code, dude. Probably a computer. You're one. thinking of Laura Computer Croft. has everything. Team Rare. Laura Croft have that? Team Rare had a bug, uh, something you can um, the code? enter in. Yeah. Wasn't, the, wasn't the code for the first one up, down, up, down, A, B, B, A, B, B, A, C, B, B, A, something like and that? And what was that one That was on Sega. I forgot B, A, start. That's the Contra code. Konami code. Um... I would recommend, Brennan, because you have a 360, I know you hardly touch it, but um, get the last Mortal Kombat, because, I mean, if you're going to... Oh, follow... I, played, I played the whole game, I beat it. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Nine. Nice. So, cool. So, you know how the story... Basically, they progressed so far. Now, number nine, they're, like, hitting the reset button, <laughs> and now number ten is going to be playing off of number nine. They did a really cool thing with the story of number nine, instead mm-hmm. of... Um, Continue on the story that they were. They did really a reset with mm-hmm. this last Mortal Kombat and yeah. retold the stories of one through three mm-hmm. and yeah. the best parts of it. And now this one, it's not continuing where, where four went, which is where the series fell off the radar. Uh, it's doing this whole new story, and from the trailers, it just looks off the walls and crazy and mm-hmm. just full of demons. And um, <clears throat> Luke Kane comes back from the dead as a zombie character now again. <laughs> You're doing that, but he looks like a full-on demon now. It looks pretty cool. Interesting. Yeah, pretty excited. Uh, we want to do some cool tournaments with the uh, the four of us. Maybe get uh, mm-hmm. uh, Scott and Johnson or Josh. <laughs> Scott and Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> Scott and Johnson. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but we get uh, Josh in here too and do a uh, big tournament. See who the best fractal minds uh, Mortal Kombat player is. Yeah. Oh yeah. I uh, challenge you guys. What's the Xbox Xbox uh, fighting game that was exclusive to Xbox when it first came out? The very it first. wasn't Tekken because that was it PlayStation. Was, that's, that's it wasn't Tekken. It the was, first like, Xbox? Yeah, it was, it was made by Was it Far Cry? Sony. No, Far Cry. No, it was made by Xbox. Sega, I um, believe. Are you thinking? No, it was made by Vector Man. It wasn't Dead or Alive. Yeah, I think Dead or Alive. Is it Dead or Alive? Won't do it. No, it's Dead or Alive 3. Yep, Dead or Alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that series? You like that game? That was a fun game. I enjoyed it. Thousand boobs and all. Yeah, that, I just remember that was a big deal when it came out. I was thinking yeah. that Mortal Kombat had the boobs in it, but I think it nah. was it Dead or Alive that did the boobs. Dead or Alive did the boobs. You yeah, turn they're... your age to 99 and they're all bouncy. Like yeah. Super bouncy. <laughs> That makes no sense. It's, Chicks it's, with yeah. big boobs can't fight. <laughs> they have back problems. They're they, ninjas. They're very limber. Oh, you're right. They do have back problems. I see some chicks with big Stop boobs sometimes. They're, they're kind of like... I can't help it. They're hunched over like, Oh, my back. It hurts so much for these big boobs. And I'm like, Oh, that's so hot. Chicks in pain from having big boobs. It's oh, almost yeah. dirty. That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's continuing what we are excited about coming up. Um, in April is Mortal Kombat. In May is... My birthday. Is yours birthday? Is Kevin's and birthday? Kevin's my birthday. Is my parents' birthday? Whoa. It's my birthday the 14th. That's oh, right. Brandon's Brandon. birthday. Wow, I'm the only fractal mind there. That, that With some May babies. There's no May baby here. <laughs> hey, May, bay, bay. We're a bunch of bulls. Hey, May, bay, bay. Right. But uh, something that uh, I know cool Kevin's slide. super excited about. The Witcher 3 is finally coming out. Mm-hmm. The Wild Hunt. Woo! Um, it's advertised to have over 200 hours of gameplay. Are you ready for that? No, 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 no. It's a Skyrim for you all over. I know. With Skyrim, I purposely, like, Oblivion, I there's not a, a an inch of Oblivion that I have not touched. Skyrim, I purposely played the story. <laughs> I even skipped an entire city, except for the one quest that wow. made you go there. You told me so much that you've done in the game, it sounds like you did a lot more than just the story in Skyrim. <laughs> I didn't do any of the side quests. You no. Yeah, I barely did any side quests, dude. You played so much of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like sixty hours of gameplay without doing any side quests. Like I tried my best to like stay. I mean, there was a few quests I did that would give me like a like an awesome sword or something. Or like I I, did, I barely spent any time on side quests and I still killed sixty hours. Wow. Like that game had so That's much. Like I purposely. Okay. But cut my time. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, The Witcher 3 is showing that 50 hours of that. If you just do the main quest, you don't do any side stuff. If I like number one and two a lot, I'll probably play number three for the full 200 hours. So you, I'm kind of thinking of just skipping ahead and just doing the three. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of really want to play two. I'm, I'm done with one. Um, I kind of want to play through two. I've always did want to play that. But uh, this number three is looking pretty incredible. Yeah. I just want to beat everybody's ass in Mortal Kombat. Hey, we'll get there. We'll see what you mm-hmm. can prove. But what what characters are you going to be? Well, let's we'll play all the characters. Do you even know who's on in the game? I would think Luke Kang, 
and Ray, Raiden. I'm Raiden. I love Raiden. That's my Raiden's character. Good. There's Sub Zero. There's Scorpion. Yeah. Egotistical. All right. There's uh, Jax. And not Jax I don't know if Jax is actually in it. Jax yeah. has to be in it. I don't man. think he was. I saw the roster. I don't remember him being in it. Who? Jax, Jax. Teller, man. Metal Arms. Oh, Jax I heard Teller. that. I heard that in the new Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Fuck hate you. They're gonna jump into the future, <laughs> really? and you're gonna play it as their children. It was set, yeah, after the events of Number Nine, and yeah, set like 20 years in the future where. Um, Sonya Blade and uh, Johnny had a baby, and you play as this. Uh, What's Johnny's last name? Johnny Cage. Johnny Cage. Do you guys think that Johnny Cage is kind of like a spinoff of Johnny Cash? Uh, no. <laughs> Maybe. Why is it? Why are the names so close? Then this is just a theory of mine. Do they act at all similar? Like rock stars. He's just looking for a way to bring theory into it. Oh, so shit. I have a theory. Kano's in it. Kano? Yep. The, 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 the Institute. Jackson's in it. Oh, yeah. Okay. The Institute. Now, is Connie Cage's sister? Smoke. Connie. Oh, the girl? Yeah. Uh, I think that's the daughter. Oh, daughter. Okay. Yeah, that's the daughter of Johnny Cage. All right. From the movie itself, so you'll never, I'll never forget okay. this line from the movie where they break Johnny Cage's sunglasses. You broke my $500 sunglasses. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm talking well, about. Hey, he goes, those are five, those are five hundred dollars as asshole, and then he does a split and kick punches the guy in the nuts. Goro, oh, Goro. Oh, and two Sonya in that movie. That's the same chick that was in Billy Madison, Veronica Vaughn. Oh wow, really? Yeah, that Veronica Vaughn. <clears throat> huh. A guy that I know, him and her got it on. Somebody's supposed to tell me. No, they didn't. To quote the movie, uh-huh. but nobody Chris knows Farley. that quote. Just like nobody knew Chris that Farley, right. the bus driver. Yeah, there you go. Oh, cool. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Jason's in the new yes. World Combat too, which is a Jason and the Predator. Voorhees, oh, really? Jason Voorhees. Yes. Yeah. So how are they gonna have Freddy in one and then not put him in the one with Jason? That yeah. was I, apparently Jason was supposed to be in nine. No, oh, don't you guys remember? It never worked out. Do you guys remember when Mortal Kombat did a thing with DC? Yeah, Mortal Kombat versus DC. Yeah. What so now they got Freddy Krueger is a sort of a dream demon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. West Everybody in Mortal Kombat has some sort of power. Mm-hmm. Uh, not necessarily. Well, they're they're think about it. Johnny Cage is has he does like a fireball type deal, doesn't he? Liu Kang does. He well, has Liu Kang does, ball, but. Yeah. Johnny Cage has something. He had that energy ball. He had the energy ball. I think that the was only added one that doesn't on. is the one of the soldiers has the gun. He has the guns. So that's the only striker. Oh, striker. Striker. He yeah. has no no power. Yeah, I don't think he does. There, there's definitely elemental parts to it, but I mean, you're you're kind of you gotta break some illusions when you start entering these. But characters what, what I'm wondering them. is, what would Jason's yeah. power be? What would his move? Oh, be? Um, because everybody has the ability to power. project something. You know, to shoot something from a distance. I, mean, I can see him throwing is his machete throw or his something. Machete? Yeah, I can see him throwing a machete throw or a weapon. Maybe hmm. throw his dead mom's head. Maybe he it. drowns him somehow. Ooh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that'd be good fatality. He makes yeah, it rain. That'd be interesting. There was one fatality I saw where it's by uh, uh, what's the dude who? Yeah, who's the guy with the uh, telekinetic or you know the one that oh, controls um, him? Raiden. Not no. Raiden. Kenji. No, no, sorry. Um, Ermac. Ermac. Oh, yeah. I see him with fatality. He has a sword that's up, and he mind controls the person to open their mouth and walk into the sword. Oh yeah, that's that is the one. most gruesome. Oh, and you see the sword is going through his mouth. <laughs> And then he just like he moves him up, and like the whole body splits oh, in half. It's just like they gonna do the X-ray thing again. Oh, oh yeah, do that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's awesome. There is there's so many fatalities. Good. Like Josh ruined them all for me because he showed me a bunch of them last night. But I won't bring him up here. Just that one probably sticks up in my mind. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> like I mean, I I imagine that the person's mind like you, they they still have like mental capacity of what's yeah. going on around them, they just, but they can't control what's going on, and yeah. this, you see a sword going right in your oh. mouth. Like, I can just... Oh. <laughs> Yummy. Yeah. Well, uh, after The Witcher 3, and um, we're going to have in June, Batman. I forget what it's called. Arkham... What is it? Shoot. Arkham... Batman. Knight? Arkham. No, Arkham... No. I want to say an A. Batman, Arkham... Arkham. Oh, I think Arkham it was Knight. Knight. Arkham Knight? 
Oh, that's right, Arkham Knight. Uh, okay, yep, yeah. it is Arkham Knight. Um, yeah, this is the final uh, one in the Rocksteady uh, game series uh, that started with the Arkham Asylum uh, way back when. Um, what a great series of games that these Batman games have been. Um, and Arkham City was the sequel to that. And now finally the third installment with Arkham Knight. Um, the Batman franchise was never a big video game thing. Like all, all the video games were notorious for being horrible. Until Arkham and Knight. When this, Arkham Asylum. Yeah, Arkham uh, Asylum, when that came out, was such a groundbreaking game. And I remember uh, everyone loving it. And I enjoyed playing it a lot. And then the Arkham City was just mind-blowing in my mind. Put the open world aspect to it. Did you just zip up your zipper? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, zipper has been down this whole time. One of the best <laughs> video games I've ever played, Ooh. based on a DC comic character. Yeah, was Superman, Superman from the 64. 64. You are. You very joking right now. I'm not joking. You think that's the best game ever? What? It's horrible. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. It was sarcasm. It was I played that game. I remember I rented it at Blockbuster, and I was so disappointed because. The controls on it were freaking awful. Uh huh. It was horrible, and I was so excited because it's like Superman. Yeah, serious, like, yeah, it's like fucking Superman. There's sixty four cool. of them too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Blockbuster, yeah. what's that, dude? <laughs> it was along with uh, Movie City. <laughs> I remember the uh, I had the broken Batman from like Super Nintendo days, the one that had the the circus level that could not be beaten because it had some kind of glitch in it. <laughs> it was like Super Nintendo or the regular Nintendo Batman. It had a circus level when. It was like uh, Batman Returns or something. It had when Robin was first introduced. There's a lot of Super Nintendo games out there that always had something that you could just never beat, so you got a different game. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, you could always find a way to beat games from uh, FAQs or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And they're yeah. a little more linear now. Our game's are a little bit more kind of straightforward. Did you guys mm-hmm. ever play Lion King on Sega? Yep. Oh, oh yeah. Was difficult. I didn't that was Nintendo, thank you. Super Nintendo. I did have a Super, was Super Nintendo. Nintendo. No, no, I mean, they had the same game. I, they also had a version. I was Super yeah. Nintendo. You're obviously Sega. You're that guy. You're a Sega guy. Yeah, what? Sega guys are weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're hey, like, who's oh. Still, <laughs> hey, 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 who's still around? Oh, that's right. Sega doesn't make a console anymore. You guys are a bunch of fools. <laughs> To be fair, Nintendo's right behind them. I know. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Nintendo's on their Nintendo, way out. Nintendo's like Sega. So I moved on to my Xbox. If it wasn't for the DS, they would have been like that. Yeah. Yeah. But to Brendan's uh, credit, there's Sega games on the Xbox now. So. Oh. But Mortal Sega's Kombat. actually falling apart. The World Cup was on Sega before Nintendo, wasn't it? No, they, they were on, but um, Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo was censored. They didn't have blood. Yeah. Uh, Sega's version had did. blood, exactly. Mm-hmm. So Sega had Vector Sega. Man. I'll say it again. And Sega had the Dreamcast. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, Sega had the Dreamcast before uh, the second Wait, generation was, consoles came exactly. out, before the PS2 and the uh, Xbox yeah, came Dreamcast out. Yeah, the Dreamcast out. failed. That was the reason why Sega yeah, because it was so consoles. awesome. But now, now, now here, <laughs> the Dreamcast was great. Though. Didn't they make a Metal Metal Gear Solid for the Dreamcast first? No, no, not the Dreamcast. Twisted they came Metal. out on PlayStation. I remember Twisted Metal when it came out for Dreamcast. Is that a PlayStation? Maybe it's PlayStation. PlayStation. Always, always PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. Are you sure that they did not make? Not Metal Gear. I can't remember what they because Metal Gear. There was two or three games that were like SNES games before Metal Gear Solid. Those Metal were Metal Gear. Gear. Yeah, and what did they, they come out for? I was just um, those were older consoles, but they were on Nintendo too. Oh, but, okay. Um, but Metal Gear Solid was PlayStation, and then um, Metal Gear Solid 2, PlayStation 2. Crazy was, Taxis. Were crazy crazy Taxi. That was a good game. What was that game with the green soldiers? What Army Men? Army Men. That's, that's the name Dude, of it. Dude, I forgot all about that game. Army yeah. Men was a You're big welcome. franchise. It was the plastic, the plastic yes. Army yeah. Men guys. Yeah. I played the one on Game Boy Color. Yeah. I to Ohio. That was uh, a game I got addicted to. That's a reason. blast from the past, man. <laughs> You're Thanks a lot, Alex. I feel I old now. Yeah. <laughs> Those were high school games for me, man. Oh, uh, you want to feel old? Let me oh, tell you some stories. <laughs> <laughs> I just seen something uh, today posted on Facebook. I can't remember what it was to make you feel old. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think of it. It's 20 years old now. Oh, the Goofy movie came out oh, 20 oh years ago. Oh, my God. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Holy crap. Brendan, have you ever seen that movie? Yeah, I have. Yeah, that was a good movie back then. Speaking, it had of... Polly Shore in it, man. What? Remember the guy that liked the cheese? Biodome. Biodome. Yeah. No, but and I'm talking about the character his girlfriend's parents' farm. What? It was son-in-law. Uh, son-in-law. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember that. In uh, I don't remember a Goofy movie at all. Like, my Goofy movie was good. 
I remember enjoying it as a kid, but I can't remember any characters from it. That being said, yesterday I met an illustrator who was a artist for Disney, Warner Brothers. Oh wow! Um, and for various corporations, he was an illustrator. Cool. And he did, or I guess, I guess he did, but it's out there now. The art for Mac and Cheese Scooby Doo. Oh wow! And he did the Space Jam posters. No. Damn, that's a good yeah. one. Space. And he does things for feminine wipes. <laughs> what, what kind of feminine wipes are you talking about? Space cleaners. Are you talking about the wipes that wipe the nipples or the wipes that wipe the hoo ha? The hoo ha. Wow. We're talking. We're talking badge wipes. I don't think that's all I have to say. Keeping it clean, huh? <laughs> that's well, what it's all about. about. There's illustrations everywhere we look. I mean, look on the walls. In the, in the room we're in right now. I, I love those streams. Everywhere the walls go, are spinning. <laughs> Some of us. <laughs> well, uh, they don't stop. That was the recent video game news that I'm pretty excited about. And um, in movie news now, uh, did you guys hear about the Deadpool movie that's uh, yes. officially been announced? I need to still play the Deadpool game, but go ahead. Ah, no, you don't. That, that's, I mean, it looked like a pretty entertaining game, but mm-hmm. I mean, this is going to be its own little thing. Ryan, Ryan Reynolds returns the character. Which he played in X Men. X Men Origins, yes, correct. Uh, not so good movie, but he did well in the character. I Deadpool. like that movie where Wolverine was. Yeah. He, which, which one? The well, the one that you're talking about with Ryan Reynolds, where yeah, it was Wolverine. Wolverine's origin. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was Wolverine. Origins. Origins. It was an X Men, wasn't it? It was X Men Origins. It was X Men Origins. Wolverine. Wolverine. Wolverine yeah. yeah. He's doing one last movie. He is. Yeah. Um, Hugh Jackman's doing one last Wolverine movie. He's in my house. It's his last one. Really? It's. I mean, he's getting what older. A dick. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine anyone playing a better Wolverine than him. He definitely owns the character a lot, like Robert Downey Jr. owns Tony Stark. Yeah, mm-hmm. really, he really just plays it so well. He does. Sometimes you gotta switch it up, like Star Wars switched it up. Though you know Disney can do that kind of stuff. They don't care. How did uh, Star Wars switch it? I see that. Star Wars switched it up because they're gonna have. A Basically, a completely new cast coming up with the seventh one. They all, are they, they not? They all have a return yeah. cast though too. The yeah. originals are back. Yeah, so Harrison Ford. Mark Campbell. Back. Yeah, Mark Campbell, uh, Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, there is a new generation that's going to be the main cast though. They're going to be the supporting characters. God, how many Star Wars do you think they're going to make after this oh, new one? So Luke, many. Luke's going to tell his son that he's his father. They already, they already <laughs> announced. <laughs> they officially announced the um, sub movie. They're going to have the trilogy seven, eight, and nine. Well, directed by, by uh, JJ, and then they're the, going the to. The spinoff is directed by somebody else, though. Spinoff. Yep. It's a it's a director. He only has a few movies. I can't remember what his name is. He's M. Night Shyamalan. No, Shyamalan Ding Dong. Um, he's dug himself a grave. Okay, he can't come out of it. I think he did that. He's made so many bad movies. movies. He's got the special power. Chronicle. Chronicle. Yes. I remember. Yes, he is doing one of those movies. I want to say Garth Edwards. Garth. Garth. He's really good, though. He's one of the youngest directors uh, out right now. There's very few. I think they talked about uh, people that are in a similar uh, place in their career. Was Spielberg with Jaws. And then you had, uh, what's his name, from Avatar. Oh, um, James Cameron? Yeah, when he did, uh, was it Terminator? Terminator and Aliens. Apparently he's no director. What I don't understand is we're talking about all these, like, second, third, fourth tier superheroes like Deadpool and Iron Man. (laughs) Iron Man's A-list now. All this stuff. It's like... Iron Man was always A-list. Not always, no. Mm -hmm. He was not (laughs) A-list before the movie. Iron Man was always considered a huge Marvel character. What are you Uh, talking about? Iron Man's huge. He was huge for the comic book characters, but not huge in the zeitgeist of the public opinion. Maybe in like a younger generation, but as far as when the comic books were coming out, Iron Man was huge. Oh, I remember watching the cartoons. Sure, Iron Man but was Iron Man. Man was big. Iron Man was really big. But in the big. public mind, it was not as big as Spider Man. Wasn't big as well. I mean, Spider Man and Superman are like beyond big. They're beyond comic books. So, All right, but, but now, now Iron Man's gone up there. Iron Man's up there with them. I thought X Men was bigger than Iron Man. He was. The, the X Men were bigger than Iron Man. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Maybe in the nineties, but when you go back to like the seventies and 80s, okay. Iron Man was way bigger. All right, let me tell you something who's bigger than all of them. All right. <laughs> We're going to get on the Goku level now. Oh, level 9,000. 
All right, I, I don't understand why they cannot make a good live-action movie of Dragon Ball Z. It just blows my mind. They like why why is it so hard? Two they, I think they've tried twice. Two Japanese. Yeah, it it's not mainstream enough. It's I mean, I, comic books. Kevin, comic book characters transcend this generation. Your parents know what Spider-Man and Superman. Your grandparents know Spider-Man and Superman. Your grandparents don't know Dragon Ball Z. Your parents yeah. don't know Dragon Ball Z. My parents know Dragon Ball Z through me. Through you, but they didn't experience it themselves. All Your of us are know Dragon, Dragon, Dragon Ball Z, Z movie. They would not, they're not going to see Superman either. Well, or, so, or Iron Man. But maybe that's your parents. But that's I mean, a lot of a lot of a lot of people in the thirties, forties and fifties are seeing will see those movies. They're sure. not gonna see a Dragon Ball Z movie. Yeah. I think that's why it's not made. That's just what you said. But I mean, as popular now that I've seen certain people who've taken who have taken trips to Japan and I see they have literally buildings uh -huh. dedicated to These Super characters. Nintendo. I mean it goes up, it has anime, it has everything. They have buildings dedicated. That's their life over there. Like, for them not to make a good one, I'd, re I'd watch a Jap Japanese version of one with subtitles, English, English subtitles. Yeah, they illustrate subtitles. They don't make a lot of live-action movies. They're, more, they're completely okay watching things animated. They're, they're more of the cartoon, but they, they do make a lot of live-action stuff that still that doesn't make the live day over here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff made that only stays over there that we mm -hmm. don't see. Now, something that's truly a lot less mainstream is what everybody's talking about right now. <laughs> Ronin Warriors, man. I remember watching that cartoon growing up. I love the show Ronin Warriors. You guys don't know what I'm talking about? No, I've no, heard, heard of this. I think I look it up. Oh, it is. I'm pretty sure I know it Awesome is. cartoon. Awesome cartoon. If you, like, watched one episode, you'd get hooked. But, you know, they don't do live action of that either. And that's, to me, way more interesting than anything Marvel or DC has. Hmm. Yeah, it is. I have a it's trivia, it I have a trivia good question. Opinion. Go ahead. What gaming company, production company, okay. what game developer owns a major league sports team and what sports team is that? Kevin, this might be more up your alley than anybody's. Because I like sports, so I'll give them that. Uh, Microsoft yeah. owning the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, I think that's... Yeah. Yeah, that, boom, that might be true. Beat your ass in technicalities. <laughs> What's up? He doesn't own it anymore. You're talking about Ballmer. Uh, no, no, Bomber, Paul Allen. Paul Allen. Allen. He, he's not, he no longer owns, he owns stock of Microsoft. I'm talking the actual company owning the team. Huh. I don't, uh... It's a baseball team and it's a Japanese company. Is it Nintendo? Is it Konami? Seattle Mariners? Yep. Nintendo owns the Seattle Mariners. Cool. I was going to say, I was going to say because, it, was it when Ichiro Suzuki was so big with them? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Because he was like the main Japanese... Baseball player. Yeah, oh. of... Okay. That's pretty cool. And now he plays with the Yankees, or I don't know if he got traded this past season, but... Suzuki's so still in baseball? Because you're talking about a person from That's, 1999. They traded to the Yankees thinking, okay, if any team's going to win the World Series before this guy retires, let's trade him to some team. Because he's, he's at that level now where he's like a year or two away from retiring. They're trying to get him a World Series. But he was never, like, considered Dude, one of the premier players in baseball. That guy's average every season? The guy... You can't strike him out. You try to strike him, he's hitting the ball every time. Like, he, the guy always finds the ball. He was huge in Japan, too. Yeah. Japan. That, too. Cool. That's I mean, a nice little trivia factor. So he's mm -hmm. a better small ball player. Yeah, he never, he's, he's, he's never big on home runs. He was just clutch. He could hit the ball and make it to base. He was really good. On base percentage, he's his dry. Hmm. Well, this sort of monkey ball stuff going on right now, that has to be a, a big deal for a baseball team to have a player like that that you know that's going to go up to bat and hit mm -hmm. the ball. Mm -hmm. It's all based on statistics now. Oh, yeah. look for big players. look for... Numbers, the design of the team, the numbers. Speaking about baseball, um, now correct me if I'm wrong. All right, I heard Pete Rose is getting reintroduced back into baseball. I heard there's like a following, people wanting to. I don't know if well, that's actually. been that way for years, yeah, but yeah. I, I heard it's a little bit more official now. Am I wrong? Did you guys hear anything about that? I'm not a big that? baseball fan, but I haven't, I haven't heard anything. Um, I know he, for anyone who doesn't know, Pete Rose for... Was it steroids? It was for gambling. betting. No, yeah, man, it was, it was gambling. gambling. It was, it was, it gambling. was, it was not steroids. Others. Well, I mean, it's like it's one or the other. It's gambling or steroids. So uh, it's, it's, it's gambling for Pete Rose. It's steroids for so, so the McGuire. entire nineties baseball. That was the most exciting time. That's what re that's what re reignited baseball for was the Sosa vs. McGuire home run season where there was just the home run record was on the line. They both beat it, I think. And then it was like, who is going to own it at the end because of the season? Because it played well on TV. It that's, did. That's the only reason. It wasn't steroids. Yeah. It was just that event that was fueled by steroids played so well on TV. The problem yeah. with baseball is 
we're also we we our entertainment is based on how things come across to us on TV. Yeah. It's not going to games anymore. Football plays well on TV. It's a great sport on TV. Mm -hmm. It becomes America's national pastime. Baseball, on the other hand, it's boring on TV. Let, let me add something to Kevin's point about the uh, 1998 home run season. The reason it was so exciting was because you had somebody about to beat Roger Maris's single season baseball record. But not just one person. You had two people about to beat it in a single season. So you had a competition going on to beating a home run statistic that lasted pretty much for 40 years, right, in baseball? A long time. Prior to that time. And both players beat it. Sammy Sosa had, I think, 66 home runs, and Mark McGuire had, like, 68, uh, 70 or something like didn't, that. Didn't Sosa come back and beat it the year after, though? No, that was Barry Bonds. Bonds yeah. Barry Bonds beat it a few years after. He took steroids, too, right? Yeah, everybody took steroids in baseball. Like, mm -hmm. you know, everybody. Mm -hmm. no. There's still some today that don't learn from the past people's mistakes, and still they get banned. They're still getting caught, you know, in their P-test, their random P-test, and, no, oh, this person is suspended for 64 games because they got... they. PEDs are well, accepted. Give it a few years. There's gonna be so much crazy shit out. You're gonna mm -hmm. detect anything. There's uh, there's people taking steroids right now that are part of a soon to be single payer system, mm -hmm. and we all will have mm -hmm. to pay for it. So that's cool. It's all right. Hey, yeah. everybody, just be mm -hmm. happy. Just so you know, I just looked it up real quick. Pete Rose. It's just now. I guess I don't know what the topic was before, other than you know Pete Rose should be banned. Pete Rose should be banned. Whatever. Now it's saying Pete Rose. Now they're trying to get Pete Rose to be. Uh, eligible for the Hall of Fame, but still ineligible to be reintroduced into baseball. So it's like two different things. Broke in the Hall of Fame for his work, but don't let him have an opportunity to have a he job. He was understood as the greatest ball player ever, just because of the way he played small ball and he hustled. No. Didn't he? Didn't he admit to gambling? Yeah, he, he did. Yeah. yeah, just let it be. He mm -hmm. admitted it's wrong. You mm -hmm. proved your point. My, my favorite player of all time, the big hurt Frank Thomas for the White Sox. Yeah. He admitted to steroids before, like, way before they, like, did a P-test or anything. Right now. He yeah. was like, he admitted to it. He's like, yeah, you know, he, he apologized and all that stuff. And he got interrupted in the Hall of Fame, I don't know, like, two years ago, three years ago. Yeah. So, he, he admitted to it. Let it be. Mm -hmm. It's like that song by Paul McCartney. Yep. Yeah. Let it be. Sexual healing. <laughs> <laughs> Curveball, if you want to do a baseball pun. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin, for adding on to that. No, that was actually by Marvin Gaye. Sexual healing was Paul, Paul McCartney's song, for those that don't know, was a song called Let It Be, which kind of goes on the, the word that he point. said. Let yes. <laughs> kind of verbatim there. All right, everybody. We're going to take a short little break, but... In the meantime, we have a very special segment for you. We're going to have a little music break for you. We got in contact by a band that um, they want us to play some of their music. It's, uh, I'm going to let you take this away from me. Oh, sorry, Kevin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, ahead, I found this band. I will state that because James is usually everything music and finds everything that... Or any band that might... Or any upcomer who is kind of underground and this is a band that... When I was getting ready for the road trip, I posted on Twitter about the Arctic Monkeys, one of their songs being one of my uh, songs for the road trip while I'm driving. And uh, this band called Rogues on the Sea, they posted, the, you know, try or uh, check them out. And it, just like anybody does when they're trying to get their name out there. Uh, and just for some reason, I, I normally don't really pay attention to those, but I'm glad I paid attention to this one because I listened to the song. I let James know about it, and James actually listened to the entire album before I did. Yeah. He did Spotify. <laughs> Wanted to get in a quick one for you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so then I listened to the album, and it, it's an enjoyable album. It's yeah, a very it's good, good. Yeah. At Rogues on the Sea. Um, and they gave us permission to play Fools in Love, which is the song that they have. Uh, broadcasted out there. I think it's right there on their Twitter page. Like, as their uh, their about me section is their link to Fools in Love, their music video, their lead single, if you will. Mm -hmm. And both Alex and Brendan, they listened to Fools in Love. They liked it. They thought it was a pretty good song. Um, That's right. But they didn't get a chance to listen to the album yet. 
Also, check out the song uh, City of Gold. That's the opening track off the album, and mm-hmm. uh, that's one I liked. You can listen to the whole album on Spotify for freezies. Yep. Um, Make sure you, if you like it, you should uh, spend money on it. It's a... Uh, you should support smaller bands. They need your support to stay around and make good music. Mm-hmm. Don't look, don't pay for music by the pop artists. They're just uh, greedy bastards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of all the bands, of all the th- of all the bands to download an album off of like a, a torrent, like don't do it to a smaller band because they're trying to make it. You know, <laughs> if you like us, buy their music, support yep. them. Mm-hmm. All right, people, all right, go to break. Nice and groovy now. Let's. Uh, the only thing I was missing was my peanut butter sandwich for all that jam. That's good. I like Ooh. peanut butter jelly. All right. Well, we're gonna finish up the news segment here. I uh, just want to bring up a couple of uh, news items that I thought were important. Uh, Super Troopers Two is finally coming out, and guess how it's funded? It's crowdfunded on Indiegogo. Really? Yes. Oh. And it was fully funded in 24 hours. Guess what the price they're asking for, Kevin? Uh, a million. Very close. They were asking for $2 million, and they got that in 24 hours. Isn't Holy that amazing? Crap. $2 yep. million dollars. Mm-hmm. to Did make a movie. Did people who funded it get any of the profits from the movie? They don't get profits. What you're doing is you are basically, in a way, kind of pre-ordering the movie. You will basically, if you spend basically about $10 in funding the movie, you'll get a copy of the movie, you'll get a t-shirt, poster, if you spend yeah. more and more money. I don't know about the profits. You rather have the profits, you're more for the money. I mean, I feel like if I'm funding you, I'm investing in you, I want some of that guap. 
Well, this is something where normally these Indiegogos and the Kickstarters, they're these smaller projects. So they're more the sense of this is something that's not in the market right now. Help fund this project and you can help make a, a community of this where normally it's a beautiful vessel, Brendan. It is. Don't ruin it with your freaking corporate greed, greed you yes. pig. Disgusting. God, you need to be bombed. You disgust me, piggy. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> but now they're currently, uh, they're currently at $3.4 million and they're continuing to rise. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty exciting movie. Uh, another uh, movie that was funded this way was the Rooster Teeth movie. It's a, it's a beautiful vessel. It, it truly is. is. Some it people is. would sit and go as far as calling it socialist, but to me, <laughs> to me, it's not socialist. It's harmony of interest. People are interested in getting something accomplished. There are people willing to try and to execute that accomplishment. And boom, harmony of interest. You can't beat it. Can't beat it. Well, another harmony of interest is the property of uh, the TV show Heroes. And that is something that is uh, being reborn, if you will. Um, Heroes Reborn will be <laughs> a TV show that's in production right now. And I uh, just wanted to bring it up. Um, it's, it looks kind of promising. There's a whole new cast except for uh, Agent Coulson. Um, they was the only good character left. The, um, the main character, well, not the main character, but the one of the main guys that was behind the scenes uh, watching these people with powers. But I... I I have a long history with Heroes because that was a big show against Lost, and of course I love Lost, <laughs> as everyone knows. But, they air at the same time? Um, Lost was first, and then Heroes was a couple years later, but and it was this show that was, oh, Lost is overplayed, but you should watch Heroes instead, and we have one good season, then we're kind of fall flat after that. Do they, do they show the shows at the same time? This, they aired... Um, I mean, did they both air at like 8 o'clock on Thursday? Oh, uh, no, no. I don't think it was that close, but... Now, did you just like... Heroes just because of Hayden Panettiere. Uh, she was uh, she was a good reason to watch it, but no, I mean that show. The first season is a great series of uh, episodes, and she was actually kind of one of the weaker characters. I've always found her kind of dwarf like. Dwarf. She's very short. She's very short. She's and stout and too. Doesn't help that she dates a super tall guy too. <laughs> a boxer. Yeah. From Ukraine. That's crazy. That happens to be uh, not prime minister, but a member of their parliament now. I don't, I don't know if it's Valerie Klitschko. It's one of the Klitschko brothers. They're boxers. You are know? they on the side of Russia or are they on the side of No, Ukraine? they're the Euro Maiden, dude. Come on. <laughs> I'm just saying. They're on the side of the Euro Maiden. So does she, Hayden Panettiere, run the risk of being assassinated? By the Russian yeah, government? yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, but not, not the same a... risk as Boris Nemstov, no. That'd See, Boris Nemstov ran the risk a long time ago and he. I want to. I mean, we talked about Neb stuff yeah. last podcast, and he was recently assassinated. But I feel like if Hayden Panettiere is going to put herself out there and marry a Ukrainian politician, she should really speak out in the same way Neb stuff did. <laughs> you're asking a lot of people. You're, 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 saying, you're right? asking her to walk barefoot on barbed wire. Put, put, put up or shut up, Hayden Panettiere. <laughs> wow, that's, that's bold. Hey, I'm with him on that. Yeah, put up or shut up. Okay. If you're going you're gonna to be out there, you better, you know... Want liberty for the Ukrainians, Fair and not just from Russia, but from these sicko Western dicks like Germany. <laughs> that want to own Ukraine as well, hmm. just That's because sick. Ukraine wants to be free and they need some scratch. I had my own theory on what Ukraine should do. They should just sell the Crimea to Russia for a pretty penny, and then boom, they got theirs. But now Russia, Russia has it. Well, Russia already has it because they moved paramilitary in. All right. All right. So, then, yep. That being said, <laughs> another, new heroes. <laughs> new heroes coming out, and another property that uh, has been officially uh, coming back from the dead is Rock Band. Uh, oh, Rock I thought Band. you were going to say X Files. Oh uh, yeah, um, I That's wasn't actually true. Going to it up, but and we mentioned X Files the other day, so they heard us and they were like, "All right, well, since we have interest spark, we'll put out another one." Fractal Minds bump. Yeah, Boom. that's right. Mm -hmm. That's big news right there. And you're welcome. So, rock band. Yes, um, harmonics is coming back to the um, music-based instrument uh, gameplay that with Rock Band Four. Uh, they're going to have a new entry this October, and uh, they're bringing back the plastic instruments. 
Um, I'm a big fan of Rock Band, as, again, all you guys know, and um, have over a thousand songs on uh, Rock Band right now. So I'm pretty excited about this. This is uh, a franchise that I have a lot of fun with. I live a lot of my music playing through that. Uh, yes. The plastic instruments you already own, will they be... Uh, able to be used in the new game? That's something they're working on. Um, unfortunately, with console hardware, there's a lot of... Um, they're making money, too. Exactly. There's a lot of money with the wireless technology. Um, that did well, Also, I mean, you can sell people some new guitars. You know, why not? Well, that's actually something that... Harmonix is a really cool developer. They put out a survey, and they wanted to know how many people out there still had their plastic instruments, if they were willing to buy new plastic instruments, if they just want the game, if they're happy with the instruments that they have. They don't necessarily want, they're not thinking in this way, in a greedy way. They want to be the smart product of what do the buyers want. It's what a harmony of interest, Brendan. <laughs> it sure is. I hate man. that phrase. <laughs> I know you do. You're like, oh. It's just so meaningless. <laughs> are, you, are you sick? Do you want people to suffer through any other way than a harmony of interest? I mean, as an excuse to have something, a harmony of interest. That's not an excuse. It's just the way things work out, man. What the hell? We all have to be in harmony. Oh, no. And harmony is a big part of rock band, especially when you have the multiple microphones. <clears throat> right, bring it back. And music. <laughs> and music, because you kind of want harmony between melodies and symph symphonies and... <laughs> Percussions and all of that. I'm gonna go on a tangent. So I'm just gonna shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But um, yeah, really excited about this. And other news also is Guitar Hero is coming back too, of course, because you're welcome, I, James. <laughs> Activision just can't stay away. You know, <laughs> Brendan uh, whispered a little birdie in their ear, and boom. If it wasn't for Fractal Minds, things wouldn't exist anymore. Yep. We're the trendsetters here. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Well, I just want to bring that to attention. Really excited about that. Let's get I on. I do. I love rock band. Yep. Sure are. <laughs> um, let's just move on to our picks and grinds. Let's get to uh, the end of this podcast. I'm not going to start. Alex, since you uh, like to talk so much, <laughs> why don't you get on with your since picks? Since I look like a deer in the headlights, are we talking about picks or grinds right now? Picks. picks. We always start picks. with picks. Then we get into Fine. Picks. My pick. God. You're putting me on the spot. I had sure all day am. to think about this, but I, you my pick, I'm trying to think right now. Well, maybe, sorry. You know, you know what my pick is? <laughs> Rand Paul running for president yeah. for 2016. I'm so glad somebody that's quasi-libertarian slash pretty much the most libertarian candidate out there uh, is running for president. Hashtag harmony of interest. <laughs> yes, exactly. The most meaningless phrase out there. But it brings so many things together and it, it makes things possible. Anyway, anyway, my pick is Rand Paul to be president in 2016. You, you act, you, so you're saying that you want him to be president. Like that's yeah, you know, there's other people. like See, I'm a registered Republican. There's other Republicans like Ted Cruz that's out there, but he's not going to have the same kind of... Uh, base gathering that Rand Paul is going to be able to bring to the table and neither is nobody else. Now, my <laughs> other my other uh, contender would be Carly Fiorina because I just like her because she reminds me of Ab Abney Dagger from uh, um, Atlas Shrugged. She's such a hottie. Not not because she's hot in any physical way. She's a woman. She's a no, no, no. Because she's doesn't consider herself a, a woman or a man. She just considers herself a hermaphrodite. No, no, <laughs> no. Just somebody in the role of conducting things that to get it done. Is listed from Atlas Shrugged. It's a female, correct? Yeah. Dagny. So she Dagny. doesn't see herself as a woman, but the person she most closely resembles is a woman. Why would she relate to a man? Just because she's a woman who doesn't relate as a woman makes her more. Um, no, no, she doesn't care about sex. She just cares about yeah, getting like the job done. That's all she cares about. Seems like Rick Scott. Um, sounds great. Um, <laughs> Brendan, what's your pick? <laughs> James, let me tell you. <laughs> um, Elizabeth Warren for President of the United My pick is in Speaking 2000, 1% of, of all Portuguese were addicted to heroin. 
One oh, this is your 1%. pick? <laughs> this is going somewhere. Going facts somewhere. is his pick. I this love is, facts. Let me tell you one. In 2000, 1% of all Portuguese are addicted to heroin. That's not that big of a That's a okay, maybe he's of the whole trying. population, 1 in 100, is a, large, is a huge amount of people. That'd be like, that's a... Could it, uh, they had one of the biggest drug problems in all of Europe and all of the world. Um, they had a uh, criminalization policy similar to that we have in the United States is when somebody is doing drugs and they're caught with it, they're thrown in jail, and that's pretty much the extent of it. Um, they decided to decriminalize uh, possession of drugs and or heroin, and they started to have uh, programs that brought these drug abusers in closer relation to their community. And over the over the course of the last 14 years, since 2015 years now, um, drug use has decreased 50 percent since they started a decriminalization so, policy, uh, which is pretty amazing. That's pretty good. Um, that's my pick because more. so they're just addicted to heroin instead of one percent of the population, just 0.5 percent. Exactly. So, so that's a that's a huge. So that's from the waist down. That but that's a that's 100%. that's a huge that's a huge thing when the numbers were only going up during the, the period of throwing people in jail for having and using drugs to decreasing it by decriminalizing it yeah that's a huge thing so um, I think times change too there's other drugs for them to get addicted the, the drug abuse in general not just heroin just drug abuse okay, okay. drug abuse that's good heroin. that's good to hear so. Maybe some of them just found out there were nice beaches there. And it's possible. Yeah. Go for a natural high. Um, yeah. yeah, if you look at the United States, so the same period, so the same amount of people using drugs. So uh, they shift from that. It's a hard knock life over here. For us. For us. But it's a hard knock life. For Maybe us. Maybe we should try to decriminalize things here and start to treat this thing as an illness instead of. Yeah, kind of like what Rand Paul. Rand Paul's Rand Paul's not full of bad ideas. No. <laughs> no. no hey, I, I would go. I'd go for that libertarian lifestyle. So, Kevin, what's your pick? My pick is the way technology allows uh, characters you see in video games to come alive, come to life in uh, TV shows. Haven't seen it in a movie yet, um, but I'm assuming it will happen eventually. Um, if it can happen in TV shows, budgets for movies are much bigger than TV shows, but. Um, yeah. Last year, I think it was last year, was Dexter's finale? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dexter's lover, uh, Hannah McKay, uh, who I am regretting looking up this person's name, which is the person I was looking up when you, when Brandon was trying to like slap me on the wrist because he thought I was looking at porn or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I convinced you were looking at porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, her name is Russian. Uh, it's... Yvonne Stravowski. Stravowski. Yvonne That's Stravowski. Polish, man. Anything ending in a ski is Polish. Oh, okay. Well, I apologize. Racist. Uh, <laughs> uh, and she plays the character Miranda Lawson, who is a potential love interest and also a scientific genius in the game Mass Effect. Uh, she, I, it, I was watching the show, and I remember seeing her. And I'm like, she looks familiar. I've seen her in a movie somewhere. And it turned out I seen her in a video game somewhere. Like that that's never happened before. That blew my mind. And most recently Get to Trevor, Kevin! There you go. That's also on my thing. Uh, yes uh, two nights ago, uh, we were watching um, Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul. And we saw a character that just again looked familiar to me. And James, Alex, and I were watching Better Call Saul and I immediately I recognized who it was. I looked at Alex, I was like, Grand Theft Auto! <laughs> so you're a screen and I was like, yes, it's Trevor. That's what I couldn't think of his name. And his name, is the actor's name is Stephen Ogg, and he plays a hired gunman uh, or mercenary in uh, the second to last episode of Better Call Saul uh, in season one. And uh, he plays the very popular character Trevor in Grand Theft Auto V. Trevor Phillips. Trevor Phillips, my bad. <laughs> We don't even know his name. as <laughs> the mercenary, and he's such a good actor because we saw because James pulled up a thing real quick on YouTube, and he seems like he plays a very good actor uh, with his emotions and everything. But I, I'm not sure why he doesn't get the play other than, I mean, he's not like on a Brad Pitt level or something. Maybe he's just been blacklisted. Well, I, guess so, I looked at his history. He actually has a very long history of doing theater work. He was an athlete for a while, and this is actually some of the more recent work that he's doing. The um, TV shows and movies. Okay. And so I think uh, oh, okay. we're going to be seeing a lot more of him. That's awesome. I mean, it, that that's it's awesome like that to see that. And then I'm just expecting to see 
like in the future, like you, they take a character from a video game and like they decide to make a movie about him or something, and you're gonna see this actual friggin' character, this this, this actor playing out this character because it, it, the body, the everything was spot on from the video game from Grand Theft Auto Five. He had that same awkward appearance, like his body just had his stance, how he, how he stood was weird, but it, it just. It had the same Trevor. Like, he just copied his body and threw it into a video game. Which yeah. I think is amazing. Yeah. To be able he to did do such that. a great job. It was mm-hmm. uh, unreal. Yeah. Um, when you mentioned it, it was, like, at first I didn't recognize him. Yeah. And when I did, I was like, oh, yeah, that's Trevor. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah, that's a very good pick. Um, mine is a recent movie I saw called uh, Gone Girl. Mm-hmm. It came out last year, directed by David Fincher, starring Ben Affleck, and uh, Rosemund Pike. Um, very she was a Bond girl, I think it was. Gone girl. She yeah. was a Bond girl too. Was she? Was she in Bond? I don't know. Maybe the <laughs> random facts by Brendan. We love facts. We also love random facts. <laughs> that I might heard, be made up. I heard John Hamm was uh, a contender to be the main star in Gone Girl. Mm-hmm. Could be. But um, this was a great story. Um, I thought for sure that it was going to be kind of this typical story. Like I've, I heard kind of mixed reviews of it when it came out, and so I was a little hesitant to watch it, but mm-hmm. I'm glad I decided to watch it. My parents were like, you got to see it, you got to see it. So I was like, all right, fine. We'll watch it together. And I enjoyed the story a lot. There was a, a, a twist that I wasn't expecting, and uh, I felt the direction was really nice. It was a slower-paced movie that I normally like, but they uh, did a good job of telling the story in a nice way, and the acting was great. Uh, ben Affleck did a good job, like he sometimes does. He's not always uh, a home run actor, but sometimes he can nail it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was. She was in Die Another Day. Ah, I'm not big on Bond. 2002. Was that that was uh, Pierce Brosnan, right? Yeah, Pierce Brosnan. Was that Gun Girl too? In that one, was it? Yeah, she, she was. was. Okay. David Fincher does that, which also, yep. he's a producer on a show that we all watch True Detective. on Netflix. Right? No, um, House of Cards. House of Cards. Yeah. I say True Detective. Which one is True Detective? Those are on HBO. Madonna Netflix. did the yeah, song yeah, for which... another day, didn't she? What? I can't remember. I'm uh, pretty sure she did. Really excellent same. movie, though. Yeah. One of the better movies I've seen so far this year, even though it was a movie from last year. Last year. Yeah. yeah we, so we both saw it this year? Yeah, just recently saw it in the past. Yeah. It's not better than Lucy, so you guys need to see Oh, uh, yeah. I guess we need to see what Lucy. We should watch that. Oh, I saw Captain America. It was better than Captain America. But... <laughs> what? Wait, Gone Girl better than Captain America? Winter Soldier. Um, I, I would agree with that. This Captain America was a little bit weaker, but... Oh. I think I might be starting to get a little uh, superhero fatigue. Ooh, I think, I think this Avengers will... Uh, Re-energize? I think so. I hope so, because I'd hate not to want to watch... So these, uh, I'm so excited. I'm excited about the Avengers, but yes. are you excited for the new Batman vs Superman? I don't know about that one either. It's just That's a lot of people things. aren't sure you about. You know what? It. I'm I a little hesitant on it. Everybody's due for a good anti-hero movie coming mm-hmm. up. Hollywood, take note. I'm sure within another week we're gonna see like a good anti-hero movie preview, just because we mentioned it here. Well, what was that? What was that? Yeah, because we mentioned it here. <laughs> What was that movie that Sonya was working on before they decided to scrap it? Um, it was supposed to be the Venom and Carnage and uh, oh, Sinister Six. Yeah, the Sinister Six, which is, in my opinion, is probably supposed to be a uh, that'd be probably anti-hero. If they're gonna make a movie about it, they gotta be an anti-hero. You gotta well, like they're characters. villains. They're uh, yeah, yeah, they're straight up villains. Yeah. Um, DC Warner Brothers, they, they are making a movie, uh, Suicide Squad. It's yeah. very much like that, where okay. the villains are the main heroes. Yeah. I think DC I mean, messed up. <laughs> With Superman, because that's the linchpin for the whole universe. Then this past Superman, I it it's was weak. better than the first one. It was weak compared Story to what Marvel's good. done. Yeah, compared to yeah. Nolan and Batman and, and, and Marvel, that's even better. Than Nolan, Nolan, yeah, Nolan's probably Batman's probably, in my opinion, the best superhero movie. Next level, yeah. next level. Marvel doesn't even compare to. Uh, it. They could have built around that. That or maybe not because Nolan no. is very you know very dark. Nolan. Mm. But no one's so unique, yeah. yeah you can't, can't really keep up with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Superman, that love story was weak. Oh gosh. It was awful. It's just like, why do you even like each other? What have you guys done together? It's like all of a sudden they're kissing. It's like, just because you saved her. Well, well the nice like, thing about the love stories in Batman is that <laughs> they switch actresses. <laughs> well, no, no, not just that. It's just that it ends up falling apart yeah there's no love story it's like just a drama not necessarily 
Fun love, fun love it doesn't story. have to end well. It it's not. It's not end. Disney. Let's put no. it that way. Superman Definitely. was too Disney for me. <clears throat> there you go. Okay. I can Except see he did murder. What's his name? That was kind of cool. Was that odd. was different. Yeah. All right, Al. What you grind? What you, well, let me just say grind? one thing. Just a just a little correction on my part. All right. She's an Australian actress. Oh. Why do you point at me like I'm Australian? Her, she because she Polish ancestry with that last name, unless she changed it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird. You see, you see, yeah, like, there's a lot of Russians. You see in that Australia. name, okay? That that long name, and you think something. Jay Z like, made a song about Russians in Australia, Kevin. Yeah, I guess it's like more of a French-based name, but let's just hit all the nationalities. <laughs> no, no, the ski is and is Polish. Oh, Brendan just... Yeah, New South Wales. Yeah, I mean, it says that... Whole, read the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> whole thing. Read it for the class. Okay, she, they migrated from Poland. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but she was born in Australia. Okay? All right. Fair enough. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you for making my point. Really? You know what grinds my gears? <laughs> Facts. <laughs> 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 Much yeah. more fun to just live in this fantasy of... <laughs> oh, they could be anything. All right, All right so we're... we're or we really going to get to me on grinds? Oh, me on grinds. You know, my my grind is going to be myself. I'm going to go full nihilist here. <laughs> and uh, grind on the existence that we all know and experience in our own lives. What kind of... What, what, kind, what are we going to get to right now? <laughs> I'm going to go... Do you I'm want a katana so you can just do you need a help number to a helpline? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not doing anything drastic just because I don't feel it's worth it. Anyway. Life is so Nihilus It's not even worth ending it. Ending it. No. no I, I don't think I can. <laughs> I'm not going to put the effort into ending this. I don't think I can. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm just joking around. But seriously, my grind is against Nihilus. They're just so... They're a bunch of downers. They don't have enough patience to... Deal with it. Take it easy, Nihilus. Humor yourselves up a little bit. I'm not looking at all you just because I think you're Nihilus, just because you're the only other people in the room. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. That was ridiculous. All right, Brendan, let's be grand. My here. grind is the phrase harmony of <laughs> oh, Yes! <laughs> I switched it up for Brendan. This is great. All right, let's get this grind all rolling. Right. It's the harmony of short term interest. It's what you want right now. It's so pursuit yes, of happiness. Oh, you fuckers with your pursuit of happiness. That's what makes you happiness. happy in the moment. That's the harmony that exists. It doesn't look at things in the long term. So, yes, I want to have the convenience of getting a water in a water bottle that costs 99 cents because I'm thirsty. There's a harmony of there. Someone's going to sell it to me. That's beautiful. But what I don't think about is that plastic bottle is going to gonna disintegrate. It's going to last forever. It's going to end up in the ocean in some patch in the fucking Pacific Ocean. And fucking birds are going to die from it. There's no harmony of interest. There. Think of the dolphins, people. And the dolphins. Or because dolphins are smarter I'm using, than it's very easy. convenient to drive here in my internal combustion car that's releasing pollution into the air that might be causing glo- global warming. Right Allegedly. now it's great, but the long term isn't so great. So it's a harmony of short-term interest. And that's the issue, is that everything we do in the system is just what makes us feel good right now, and we're not looking at the big picture. And that's why I don't like people like fucking Rand Paul, who says, oh, just let the market fucking decide everything. But what they don't think about is, you know what, when you let the market decide everything, it's based on a harmony of short-term interest that don't really take into account the long-term effects. That's my fucking grind. On to you. Drop the mic. (laughs) (laughs) Damn status-ass nihilist. (laughs) Uh, mine's gonna be quick. I think we touched up on this probably around Christmas. I, I bet we did. I think James probably brought it up around Christmas. Um, I didn't originally have a grind. <clears throat> this just came to my mind because uh, dealing with it, it deserves to be a grind. And it's the fact that uh, holidays bring out the worst in people around, um, like for people who work in retail. Uh, when you work in retail and you got to deal with people who take the meaning of the holiday and make it into a picture with a bunny rabbit or just the whole thing that Easter or Christmas mind you you gotta remember those people you're dealing with in retail aren't enjoying the holiday like you are you have that opportunity to enjoy the retail or to enjoy the holiday you chose to come to the store to get your photo or to shop and deal with the retail associates which the associates put on a happy face and deal with you. 
the associate would probably rather be with their families. So that would be my grind is the fact that not that retail stores decide to be open on the holidays, but the fact that people who come into the store and they get mad like it's our fault or like it's the company's fault that something's going wrong. Why is there a huge line for this free photo? Yeah, it's it's a little ridiculous. People need to the greed of the holidays is is getting out of hand, and it's the whole reason people like they they just mock. Uh, I, w- I mean, I want to say like they mock like the the, the American like capital uh, thing, but. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure it goes all around. It's right. of interest. There are people that want to buy a product, and there's someone that's willing to sell it. The externalities of that is, so there are people that have to work on religious holidays that they find important. So just suck it up. I know <laughs> I know what the title is going to be. I know the title of this podcast is going to be... It's going to be... It's going to be... It's going to be... It's going to be the theory of <laughs> harmony of interest. <laughs> yeah. Harmony of interest. yeah. Like he keeps that. up bringing up theories. You keep up bringing harmony of interest. The harmony of short-term <laughs> interest or the disharmony of long-term yeah. interest. But yeah, it's disgusting. Remember the people. My 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 conclusion of that is that remember the people who are working the stupid holidays and dealing with your crazy ass. Okay, Can have some have some compassion. Okay. Yeah, yeah you I fucking hate compassion. Animals. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, yeah, my grind is Russians. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know how to govern themselves. It's turned out we figured that much out. Oh my god! All right, boy. Thank you for another <laughs> successful off the mic cast. We're going to leave this right now. We're, we're going to end it with that. <laughs> yes, we are. Alex has a smirk on his face, if y'all can see that. That's exactly where we're going to end it. Thanks for watching and listening, everyone. Correction from James. He said something about Scarecrow. He was trying to mean about Scarecrow when he was talking about Batman earlier, about the actor that played Yes, Sam Murphy. He played the character. But you didn't say Scarecrow. What did say? He said Sunshine or something. He also he started the movie Sunshine, movie. Alex. But he said Sunshine. Were you crazy because he stared at the sun for too long? Oh my goodness, I hate you all. All right, bye everybody. <laughs>